Today we are discussing the place P, um, one of the six P's in the retail mix. Uh, and that place P is all about retail locations. Uh, you can um, Google what are the three most important things in retailing, and often what you'll see come up is the answer, location, location, location. Uh, so that's a very kind of common quote in the industry, but um, place is very important because we know that location is one of the most influential considerations in a customer's store choice decision. Um, Customers go to the store that's closest to them to get the product that they need. Um, we already talked about how location can be used to develop a sustainable competitive advantage. And we know that location has a huge impact in determining our success as a retailer because when we sign a retail lease, um, we can be locked into a 10 to 15 year agreement. So we're gonna be there for quite a while. Um, chapter seven is all about place and location uh, and how retail entrepreneurs make decisions on where to locate their establishments. Um, chapter seven is going to introduce us to general types of locations that a retailer has to choose from. And then chapter eight, which we will review later in this module, uh, walks us through very specific site characteristics that retail entrepreneurs look for. Um, so the first thing we have to understand when we talk about location uh, is unplanned versus planned. So unplanned retail locations do not have centralized management. Uh, centralized management um, is uh, um, determines what stores will be in a development, where stores will be located, how they're going to be operated. So we see that centralized management more in planned retail locations. So planned retail locations have a shopping center type of setup. There's generally a developer or a management team who's going to make and enforce policies that govern store operations. Um, so there's a, a more of a central uh, decision making power over planned retail locations. Now, we're going to talk about a lot of different types of unplanned and planned locations. All of them have their benefits um, and all of them have some challenges that they impose upon the retail manager. Um, but it's important to really talk about the different types of locations uh, because similar to the types of retailers, there's a reason why we have so many different uh, types of locations. So we are going to start with unplanned retail locations. Um, and when we look at unplanned retail locations, one of those types is a freestanding site. Freestanding sites are individual isolated stores that are not connected to any other retail store. Now there's some advantages to having a freestanding site. Uh, there's also some disadvantages, but let's start with the advantages. Um, parking is very easy. There's ample parking for the consumers to use to get into your retail store. Freestanding sites generally have very high levels of vehicular traffic, meaning there's lots of cars passing by, driving by, um, that could stop in. Freestanding sites generally have very high visibility, and that's because they stand alone by themselves, so there's not a lot of other retailers to block the view. Uh, they have modest occupancy costs, and what that means is that rent is pretty average. So we're going to talk about some other types of retail sites where they have very high, high rent, um, and some retail sites that are known for their low rent. Um, freestanding sites are kind of, kind of in the middle there. Uh, there's few restrictions like we've already kind of discussed, but probably the biggest advantage to a freestanding site is that there's an opportunity for a drive-through window. Okay, so are you starting to picture some of these freestanding sites in your head? Um, we'll talk about some examples here in a second as soon as we cover some disadvantages. So there are a couple of disadvantages to operating in a freestanding site location. The biggest is that there are is no foot traffic. So people aren't normally walking around um, and they can't just stop in on their walk. Um, and the second is that there's no drawing power. So what I mean by that is that there are no nearby retailers to attract customers. So we'll talk more about drawing power in a few minutes as we look at other retail sites. Um, but it's important to note that freestanding sites do not have uh, that drawing power. So you've probably already started to picture 
some retailers that use freestanding sites, but if you thought of uh, drugstores or pharmacies like CVS and Walgreens, you'd be correct. Um, there's a lot of telecommunication stores that operate in freestanding sites, um, coffee shops, fast food restaurants, banks, um, all operate using freestanding sites and mostly because they do use that drive through window um, frequently. We're going to talk about another type of unplanned retail location. Um, another type of unplanned retail location um, are urban locations. Uh, urban locations are retail locations that happen to be in large cities and we're actually going to break it down further and talk about some central business district locations. So central business district locations are located in a very traditional downtown business area within a city. So this is your central business district where all of your high rises are, um, where most of your commercial business is happening in your um, city. Okay. Um, so some advantages to operating in the central business district are that it draws a lot of people during business hours and there are very high levels of pedestrian traffic. Um, central business district stores, retail stores, tend to target people who work in the city. Um, so we see a lot of uh, fat, quick serve restaurants, um, some fast food restaurants. Uh, you might see retailers like dry cleaners um, or some specialty apparel stores. So these are targeting higher end business workers that might stop by during lunch um, or on their way out of town after work. Now a disadvantage to operating in the central business district is that there's a very low flow of traffic on evenings and weekends. Um, again, these locations are in the business area of the city. So after people go home at 5 p.m. or on Saturday and Sunday when offices are closed, uh, you're not going to have many customers. In fact, a lot of these central business business retailers have limited hours um, on the evening and in the weekends to try to um, uh, customize their, their shoppers. Another type of urban location is an inner city retail location. And these are some of the lower income residential areas within the city. Um, unfortunately, these areas have fallen victim to urban decay. So there's lots of empty lots, empty buildings, um, but there are some small retailers that are, that are starting to occupy some of the space in the inner city. Um, a couple of reasons that they are operating in the inner city um, is because you can get a high sales volume um, on certain products. And so we see a lot of uh, food retailers um, and some uh, single independently owned restaurants opening up in the inner city. Um, a lot of people who live in the inner city use public transportation and so they don't own vehicles and so they do need uh, retailers that they can walk to or take public transit to. And so having a food retailer or a fast food restaurant is very beneficial um, and can be very profitable in an inner city location. Uh, we also see stores like convenience stores, um, drug stores, um, pharmacies opening in the inner city. Uh, there's two disadvantages to the inner city. Uh, the first is a risk of crime. Um, I mentioned earlier that a lot of inner city areas have fallen victim to that urban decay. Um, and so they, uh, you know, empty buildings um, and lots. And so crime can be a problem. And the second disadvantage is there's no parking. And I already said, you know, a lot of people who live in the inner city don't have vehicles. Uh, but basically that lack of parking means that unless you live in the inner city, you're not shopping at these inner city locations. Um, so the third type of urban location is a gentrified area. Uh, gentrified area are the renewed areas in a city. So um, maybe what the inner city used to be, a lot of inner cities are being gentrified now. And so there's this renewal of offices and residential living and retail spaces within a city. Um, and so, as these areas are becoming gentrified, uh, retailers are moving in because they want to be by uh, the type of people that live in a gentrified area. So gentrified areas tend to target uh, millennials, um, younger 
uh, professionals, younger business professionals who are starting their careers um, and who want to live in the city. Um, so these gentrified areas target people who want to live, work, and play all in the same place. Um, and so there are some advantages to being in a gentrified area. Uh, you do attract young professionals uh, to your business. So we see a lot of coffee shops and bars and breweries and boutiques um, opening up in these gentrified areas. Uh, disadvantages, they are very small locations. So your urban locations in general, whether central business district, inner city, or gentrified, are all going to be very small spaces. So you can't have a lot of, par uh, a lot of product in there. Um, and then the second disadvantage is, again, that parking issue. Um, very hard to find parking or your consumers are going to have to pay for parking in a parking garage, which can deter uh, some types of people, of customers. All right, so the last unplanned location um, is a Main Street location. And Main Street locations are traditional downtown shopping areas um, that tend to be in smaller towns. Um, or it could be a secondary shopping area in a large city or in a suburb of a large city. Um, you guys are probably all very familiar with Hancock Street in downtown Milledgeville. That is a perfect example of a Main Street location. Um, <clears throat> the advantages to operating in a Main Street location is that the, there's a better shopping experience for the customer. Um, so there are generally pedestrian walkways, there are shelters, benches, um, bushes and flowers and trees. And so it's just very um, unique and it creates an experience that customers like to have. Um, uh, generally, there's some cost savings to operating in a Main Street location because the town will pay for the landscaping outside of your business. Uh, generally, the town is also going to pay for um, any exterior lighting. Uh, they're going to pay for, you know, the trash cans, the benches, um, kind of that exterior upkeep. They'll also uh, pay for some of the repair to the um, exterior of the buildings. Um, if the sidewalk needs repaired, parking spots need painted, et cetera, uh, the town will pay for a lot of that, which is an advantage to being in this Main Street location. Um, of course, there are a couple disadvantages that we do need to identify. Um, sometimes there can be low foot traffic. So generally, people do have to drive to the main street, park their car, and then walk. Um, and so if people aren't willing to drive down to that main street, you could lose some traffic there. Um, and then the other disadvantage, even though there's some cost savings to working with the town, um, there are some restrictions that you generally have to follow. So an example is that you actually have to have a permit to have a sandwich board sign outside of your location if you um, operate in the Milledgeville Main Street. So a lot of our local businesses have to file for a permit to be able to put a sign out there um, because a restriction is that you can't just have any old sign out front of your building. So. That's an example of one of the restrictions they might face. Um, another restriction is that they might be required to be opened or closed certain hours. Um, and so one thing that the town of Milledgeville requests is that if you operate on Hancock Street, that you have an extended hour, um, extended hours on First Friday. Uh, so First Friday is the first Friday of the month in Milledgeville where there's a downtown celebration. And if you have a retail location on Hancock Street, um, it's requested that you stay open late to accommodate uh, shoppers who may be downtown at that time. So um, those could be disadvantages um, for that Main Street location. So all of these unplanned retail locations, just to recap, being unplanned means that there's no central management that's controlling how the retail store operates. Um, and the different types of unplanned locations we talked about were freestanding sites, urban locations, and Main Street locations. Our next lecture will introduce planned shopping locations.